Today we are going to talk about a patent ductus arteriosus which is basically a congenital anomaly and a left to right shunt which means which basically brings back the blood from the left side of the heart to the right side of the heart from the left circuit to the right circuit. Now to understand the, fet uh, the patent ductus arteriosus we must first understand the fetus fetal circulation. Now basically this patent ductus arteriosus is just a patent a patent ductus arteriosus which normally should not be patent which normally should not be patent after birth but to understand that why it be it remains patent why it remains patent after birth we must understand the fetal uh, circulation now let's begin the fetal circulation before birth what happens is that when the baby is in the mother's womb and the baby cannot breathe the lungs of the baby the lungs of the baby are basically collapsed blood blood cannot go into the lungs of the baby and baby is basically taking the oxygenated blood from the mother now blood basically comes to the right atrium from the right atrium it goes into the right ventricle from the right ventricle normally the blood goes into the lungs and from in the lungs the blood gets normally oxygenated and from the lungs the blood returns back the blood basically returns back into the left atrium then from the left atrium blood goes into the left ventricle and then the left ventricle basically pumps the blood into the whole of the body this is something normal but in the fetal circulation when the baby is in the mother's womb the, the lungs are collapsed the, the baby cannot breathe now the blood in the baby basically from the aorta it goes into the uh, placenta this is placenta now this placenta is basically attached with the uterus of the mother and in the uterus the exchange of the blood is occurring this deoxygenated blood is going to the mother's body and from the mother's body through the placenta the oxygenated blood is coming into the baby directly now this blood when it comes into the baby it comes through the umbilical vein it comes through the umbilical vein and from the umbilical vein through the ductus venosus through the ductus venosus it basically bypasses the lung it basically bypasses the lung and this is basically the ductus venosus part this is the ductus venosus part and through the ductus venosus the, the blood directly comes into the ivc through the ivc inferior vena cava now this inferior vena cava this is basically bringing now this is the aorta it is taking the blood to the body the body is consuming the oxygen and and the remaining the remaining blood is basically coming back through the inter ivc through the inferior vena cava to the heart but along with that the blood is going through the umbilical artery this is the umbilical artery through the umbilical artery into the placenta and from the placenta the oxygenated blood is coming through the umbilical vein now these are this is the umbilical artery this is the umbilical vein and through the normally in the veins we have the deoxygenated blood but we know that in the pulmonary artery and the umbilical artery the umbilical vein in the pulmonary vein this is reversed so basically here the umbilical vein is bringing the oxygenated blood here the deoxygenated blood is coming and here the directly the oxygenated blood from the mother's body is coming and it directly bypasses the liver and through the ductus venosus through the ductus venosus it directly goes into the ivc inferior vena cava here the deoxygenated blood and the very very oxygenated blood it mixes and the saturation of the blood it slightly decreases now it has been shown with the pink color now what happens is that this this blood it directly the blood from the inferior vena cava it directly empties through the foramen ovale through the foramen ovale into the left atrium although it enters the right atrium but through the jet effect through the jet effect here we have the foramen ovale now foramen ovale is present before the birth ductus venosus is also present before the birth it it obliterates after birth similarly this foramen ovale which is present here it obliterates or it finishes after birth and it converts into uh, something else but the baby is the baby is in the mother's womb this blood which initially was very oxygenated here it mixes with the deoxygenated blood that the the, 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 uh, the saturation level slightly decreases but this blood from the inferior vena cava it directly goes into the uh, right atrium and in the right atrium through going through the right atrium it directly goes through the foramen ovale into the left atrium it directly goes into the left atrium from the left atrium the blood goes into the left ventricle the left ventricle basically pumps the blood directly basically the uh, this left ventricle pumps the blood directly into the body now what happens what happens is that deoxygenated blood from other parts of the body like this is the superior vena cava here we have the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava here we have the superior vena cava blood from the superior vena cava it is coming to the right atrium it empties into the right atrium from the right atrium the deoxygenated blood goes into the right ventricle so blood in the svc is coming into the right atrium from the right atrium it goes into the right ventricle and from the right atrium the blood is going directly through the pulmonary artery now blood is going into the pulmonary artery normally in a normal human being this pulmonary artery would take the blood into the lungs it would get oxygenated and then it would return back into the left atrium but but in the fetal circulation we are discussing the fetal circulation so in the fetal circulation the is the 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 lungs are collapsed this blood from the right ventricle it cannot go into the lungs 
it cannot go to the lungs but there is a shunt present there is a shunt present which is known as the ductus arteriosus ductus arteriosus so this is basically the ductus arteriosus this is the ductus arteriosus and the blood from the as we see the superior vena cava coming into the right atrium to the right ventricle through the pulmonary artery it goes through the ductus arteriosus it goes through the ductus, ductus arteriosus into the aorta now when this deoxygenated blood when this deoxygenated blood was coming it slightly mixes with this blood and then it mixes again with here with this blood and the saturation level of the blood falls again now this blood is going to the body and it is being supplied to the body although the saturation is slightly low but it is still still higher than the deoxygenated blood now this is basically the deoxygenated blood when this blood will go into the body it will become deoxygenated completely and it will return back through the ibc or through the svc the superior vena cava the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the body now normally normally the lungs are collapsed or the lungs are collapsed all the time before birth but as soon as the as soon as the baby birth occurs as the as the baby is born the closure of ductus arteriosus occur at the birth closure of this ductus arteriosus occur and lungs become to expand as the baby cries and as the baby starts breathing lungs are uh, lungs basically uh, open and the this ductus arteriosus it basically closes so when the ductus arteriosus closes blood begin to go into the lungs and it starts getting oxygenated into the lungs and from the lungs it is coming back into the heart and the normal circulation of the adult uh, human being starts but but if the closure does not occur if the closure does not occur if no closure occurs if this if this shunt does not close if this shunt does not close it is labeled as patent ductus arteriosus so normally normally the purpose of this shunt was to divert this blood was to divert this blood into the aorta from the pulmonary artery into the aorta because the lungs are collapsed the lungs are collapsed and blood cannot move into the lungs and after birth at birth this duct should close because now blood should move into the lungs but around 1 in 5500 babies around 1 in 5500 babies this duct does not close this duct does not close and it remains open now what happens is that the now the lungs are uh, functioning the lungs are functioning the lungs are no more collapsed but on top of that this duct is also open so what happens is that the the, the blood is being oxygenated in the lungs it is coming back into the left atrium from the left atrium blood is going into the left ventricle from the left ventricle the blood is going into the aorta and from the aorta the blood is coming back through this duct the blood is coming back through this duct now before birth in fetal circulation before birth in fetal circulation when lungs were collapsed when lungs were collapsed blood was moving from the pulmonary artery into the aorta pulmonary artery into the aorta because pressure because pressure on the aorta side was Uh, sorry pressure on the aortic aorta side was low pressure in the aorta was less because the blood was being oxygenated through the placenta but pressure in the lungs was high during fetal circulation after fetal circulation after fetal circulation normally the pressure in the lungs decreases and pressure in the aorta increases before birth pressure in the aorta is less and pressure in the lungs was high so blood cannot move into the lungs due to high pressure and it was moving through the aorta due to less pressure but after birth after birth the pressure in the lungs decreases and pressure in the aorta increases pressure in the lungs decreases and pressure in the aorta increases so normally the blood normally the blood which was initially moving from the pulmonary artery into the aorta in fetal circulation now it reverses now it is coming from the aorta into the pulmonary artery and it is going again into the lungs it is getting oxygenated again it returns back into the left atrium it gets oxygenated it it is pumped again into the left ventricle it is pumped again into the aorta and due to less pressure this blood is some portion of this blood is coming back into the pulmonary artery it is going again into the lungs it is oxygenated again it returns again into the left atrium it returns back into the left ventricle it is pumped again into the aorta and then it returns back into this ductus which is basically patent which is patent which normally should close as at birth now it, this is patent so what happens that there is recirculation of the blood through the lungs there is recirculation of the blood there is recirculation of the blood through the lungs now this thing basically decreases the exercise capacity although the the kids will not feel it initially because the blood is being oxygenated again and again there will be no cyanosis but the left ventricle has to work a lot because the blood is recirculating 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 through the lungs so it the left ventricle basically hypertrophies the size of the left ventricle increases it will be pumping blood so many times now this thing also increases the the fluid the blood in the lungs which basically leads to the pulmonary edema and it also leads to the heart failure now initially initially there will be no murmur initially there will be no murmur but after 1 to 3 years of age 
due to the pressure of blood moving from the aorta into the pulmonary artery a murmur will be heard this is known as the machinery murmur and the treatment of this patent ductus arteriosus is basically the surgical correction or the surgical this thing is basically ligated this is closed so the whole circulation becomes normal if it is not closed the patient will die the patient will die in around 20 to 40 years of age so to understand the patent ductus arteriosus we must first understand what is ductus arteriosus and what is surfeital circulation now normally in the uh, in the in this fetal circulation when the baby is not born the lungs are collapsed the baby is basically receiving the oxygenated blood through the umbilical vein this blood is coming through the umbilical vein and through the ductus venosus this blood is directly going into the inferior vena cava and from the inferior vena cava this blood is directly going to the right atrium from the right atrium it is going through the foramen ovale into the left atrium and from the left atrium the blood is going into the left ventricle and from here it is pumped directly into the aorta and the deoxygenated blood is coming through the superior vena cava it is directly going into the right atrium from here it is going into the right ventricle and from the right ventricle it is going through the pulmonary artery through the pulmonary artery and through the pulmonary artery is the lungs are collapsed the pressure in the lungs is high and the pressure on the aorta is less before birth in the fetal circulation so the blood from the pulmonary artery is not going into the lungs rather it is shunted through the ductus arteriosus through the ductus arteriosus into the aorta through the aorta at birth closure of the ductus arteriosus occurs after birth closure of this ductus arteriosus occur normally because the oxygen the oxygenation the oxygen uh, saturation of blood in this ductus arteriosus increases so constriction of this ductus arteriosus occur but one in 5500 babies will have patent ductus arteriosus or open ductus arteriosus and the size of this uh, ductus arteriosus which normally increases if it does not closes so normally it will close within few hours or uh, one or two days but if it remains open then what happens is that now the, the the pressure in the lungs have decreased because the lungs are no more collapsed and the pressure in the aorta has increased so the blood which initially was going from the pulmonary artery into the aorta is now coming from the aorta into the pulmonary artery because now pressure on the aorta size side has increased there is increased resistance and pressure in the um, lungs is low so blood it is easy for the blood to come back into the pulmonary artery and it keeps on uh, circulating in the lungs and in the left ventricle and it leads to a recirculation <coughs> recirculation of the blood through the lungs this whole thing basically puts a lot of pressure on the left ventricle and the left ventricle has to work a lot and it has to pump the blood so many times it leads to decreased exercise capacity and during um, exertion the baby can have decreased uh, blood pumping or um, heart failure can occur on top of that due to uh, continuous flow of blood through the lungs pulmonary edema can also occur in during this circulation of the blood if there is if the uh, auscultation of the chest is done uh, there will be a machinery murmur, murmur present in the uh, pulmonary area and the treatment of the patent ductus arteriosus is just surgical closure and this will completely recover this uh, condition and if it is not closed then death can occur at 20 to 40 years of age so that's all about the uh, patent ductus arteriosus which basically is a left to right shunt a left to right shunt because the blood from the left side of the heart it returns back to the right side from the aorta it returns back to the uh, pulmonary artery which is a right side artery so it is a left to right shunt and uh, we have also basically uh, discussed in detail the fetal circulation so that's all about the patent ductus arteriosus and its treatment thanks a lot for watching the video